Hey, good morning everybody. It's Brendan with Evoke Bike. So we're here to answer the question, what do you do when you miss a workout? How do you rearrange your cycling training plan? And really, everyone is going to have a completely different schedule. Some people ride long on Mondays. Some people, you know, it's just not, there's no real templated way, which is exactly why you need to not follow a template, but have something customized to yourself. So when you're making your own training plan, what do you do when things go awry? I'm gonna try and lay out some principles that we follow and you can apply these to your own training then. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, even more importantly, we're still trying to find new cyclists that we can help out. So if you can share this video, if it's helpful to you, that'd be awesome. Um, also comment below, if you watch this with no volume and you really need those subtitles, uh, let me know. It's just an extra step that takes a decent amount of time that I might cut out if people aren't really utilizing that feature. So appreciate your help and feedback. Okay, so this tends, check out the blog where I lay out a lot of different examples. Um, I guess what we'll do is we'll walk through like, what if you miss one workout, two workouts, three workouts and if you've missed four workouts in a week it's basically a rest week so we'll address that but we want to make some assumptions here so again adjust these assumptions to the days of the week that apply to you but like let a most cyclists will take monday and friday as a recovery day they're going to do their longer rides on the weekends and then tuesday wednesday thursday are their interval days most likely only two of those days should be intervals, especially if you're doing a hard ride on the weekend. Um, while there's benefit to doing Tuesday and Wednesday, and this could be a whole other video, as the hardest, the hardest, and then the second hardest day being Wednesday, um, there's definitely benefit to that from like a capacity standpoint. Um, and also if you race back to back days on the weekend often, that's a big help. But also athletes, that want to get the most benefit from the workout by being the most recovered as possible, we'll probably do them on Tuesday and Thursday with an endurance ride in the middle. So I lay these bullet points out in the blog, check that out just so you can get it in your head of uh, what where I'm talking about in the week. Um, so easiest one first, you missed the recovery ride, no brainer, just skip it, move forward. Uh, if you miss the Wednesday endurance ride, same thing, skip it, move forward. The thing I wanna note about that is that's probably the most mailed in and skipped workout that I see people do. And those are really crucial to keeping your TSS and CTL up and keeping your fitness growing um, from a max watts and physiological growth standpoint. It's the one that we don't see the most though, right? It's really hard to get a tangible feel on the endurance gains that you make time over time over time. But I always tell an athlete, you know, if someone has eight hours to train, I say, man, if you get to nine, that's a 12 and a half percent increase in training over the whole year if you did nine hours each week versus eight. So just remember skipping the two hour endurance ride or 90 minute endurance ride, you don't wanna get in that habit. Um, you miss a weekend ride, you, you miss a ride, uh, what, there's not much you can do. Um, you can, if you don't work a nine to five, maybe you can shift your schedule where you're doing a longer ride on Monday um, and you'd shift everything forward a day and take out that endurance ride on Wednesday. But I think the most common question is, I miss my hardest day on Tuesday, what do I do? So I would say if you miss the hardest day on Tuesday, do it on Wednesday in place of your endurance ride and then go hard again on Thursday. Keep that normal work out there. And you're gonna get the benefit of learning or teaching your body to go hard two days in a row. Even if Thursday is a little bit tougher, I mean, what you're gonna reap from that back-to-back -back session is really good down the road. Now, if you're trying to do VO2 max work, it might be really hard to go two days in a row. Over time, you'll get better at doing it, but don't overthink it. Like go out, hit what you can hit, go really hard, and then on Friday really recover and maybe take Saturday a little bit easier than normal. Or if you have a ride that you gotta go to, you've already, you know, people are waiting on you, go Saturday and then make Sunday pretty easy. And then have Monday as easy again because you want to be able to go hard again on Tuesday. 
And that's really, I think the overarching theme of the video is if you miss a workout, think in terms of moving forward as if you were just setting up your plan that day. Like what's your main goal? And you wanna be getting the hardest, highest intensity session in, hopefully at least two of them during the week, but place them so that you're not too tired to do it again next week because you're most likely in a periodized schedule. If you're not familiar with periodization, it's based, think of it as progression, right? If you do 10 minutes of work one week, you wanna be doing 15 minutes the next week. Or if you're doing 10 minutes at X watts, you wanna be doing 10 minutes at X watts plus 15 watts. Um, very general guidelines, but that's how you wanna be thinking of your training. So use that as things get funky, be like, okay, how can I still go hard, but be ready to go hard the next week? And that's a similar question, similar scenario when people are like, ooh, my kids are gone for two days. I have an extra six hours to ride. They go out and blast way too many hours. And then the next week they're just trash because they just rode way too much. So they weren't thinking forward. They weren't saying, hey, I got these extra hours. What should I do with them? But so that I'm still able to progress the next week. Okay. Um, if you miss two days, two workouts during the week, check out the blog because I highlight different scenarios. But again, try to get your high intensity days in. So you're gonna have to move things around. But even if you missed, you get to Monday and your boss is like, hey, you've got things going on. You're not riding Tuesday and Thursday. So now you've got Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Ride hard Wednesday, recover hard Thursday, ride hard Friday, and then go easier Saturday and hard Sunday, but not so hard, you know, if you don't normally ride four hours, you ride three hours, don't go four hours trying to make up time because then you're gonna be not as recovered come Tuesday when you wanna get that hard session in. So what do I have to do to still get the intensity in but still build towards next week? Now it gets trickier if you're a bike racer, if you miss workouts, um, well, we'll keep going. We'll say th if you miss three workouts, you're almost to the point where it's like, hey, do I just start to call this a rest week? Um, or if you're gonna miss three workouts, can I still get the intense sessions in while being recovered enough for the next week? And I would say I would do the intensity and instead of the long endurance sessions, say your long ride is three and a half hours, I would plan to cut that to two and a half hours and do intervals that day. Now, I'm not a huge interval guy on the weekends because I like to ride far and I like to just not stare at my power meter and be like, you know, all the feelings that intervals bring, you don't, I just don't really wanna be tied up with those. But if for one week it gets me back on track, I'm gonna do it. So again, get the high intensity and get the sessions in that you really need but be able to move forward with the next week. Um, now, if you're racing and you have races coming up, this gets trickier because everyone's taper is gonna be a little bit different. But in the blog, I think the biggest thing is when people start getting close to a race, and this is the time when I really lean on Patrick as my coach to say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Um, is it too much? We always wanna do too much, right? Like remember that the hay is in the barn, meaning when you are a week and a half out, there's not a ton of improvement that you're making for the upcoming event. You're staying sharp and shedding fatigue. We, we as people that love to ride a bike and athletes that are obsessed about performance and trying to be our best, always wanna do more than we really need. So this is when I lean on him the most and he kinda like is like, dude, you're good. Like you're not doing five hours today, you're gonna do three and a half and you're gonna have some higher intensity stuff in there to stay sharp. Um, and yes, people have asked me, hey, does Patrick really coach you? 100%, like that doesn't mean that I don't lay out workouts and that we don't set up a calendar together and that I might be like, nah, I don't really vibe with what's, what this is. But having someone, a coach is so much more than just setting up the training plan. Like it's having somebody in your corner that you can be like, that has the 30 foot overview, 30,000 foot overview, yeah, 30 foot overview. <laughs> um, 
So it's really important just to have that person, your coach is like your consultant. Um, Jim Miller from USAC has a really good way of looking at when he talks about his athletes and this guy's coaching Olympians and world champions and the, the dude's awesome. I met him in Boulder uh, very briefly in a breakout session. Um, he says the athlete's the CEO. Like they make the call on their training. If they wanna bail on a workout or if they wanna ride more, rev, they're the CEO. And he's like their consultant to them. And that's sort of how Patrick and I work. You know, we both ha know like what our body needs and wants, but there are times where it's like, yo dude, I need your help. So yes, I 100% consider Patrick my coach. Now, and so that's why I lean on him more when, when I get close to an event. Say you're getting close to the event, you're two weeks out and like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, your kid gets sick and this happens, that happens, and you're like, whoa, oh my God, my, my race taper is getting totally messed up. Just remember that you wanna keep some riding in the legs. So people start getting to the event and if they're very like taper rest heavy, they like are over worried about doing uh, too much intensity, you can't cut everything. Like if you just keep going at that point, you're gonna be dull by the time you get to your race excuse me, especially if it's a road race, Grand Fondo, anything with any duration. If it's a criterium, you can be pretty darn rested for those and you wanna be, because you wanna have that high neuromuscular power. Um, or if it was like a prologue TT, but if it's a prologue, you're going into a stage race, so you really don't want that. You need some miles in the legs. You could do some hard rides like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then have that rest week um, super restful with like some opener with some harder efforts on Tuesday and then a couple opener sessions, but check out the blog. That one was a little harder to lay out. Like, you know, what happens if it gets messed up going into a race? Um, and if it's a B race, you're going there to race, to get the experience, the intensity, um, the same sort of, I guess, idea applies that you want to get your high intensity sessions. And in. even if you have to do them on a Thursday, rest Friday, go race Saturday. If it's a B race and you miss a workout on Tuesday, don't be like, oh, I gotta, I gotta stop doing high intensity stuff because I got this race. It's like, dude, you made it a B race. It's not a priority. You need to train through this race so that you keep growing and you keep pushing your CTL up. You keep the TSS in the legs. You keep getting stronger and training. It's a training race, basically. Um, with that said, you don't need to go into B races, you know, 25 hours into the week and totally smash so that you don't actually race. You want to race, but you're not going to be at your best. Um, that's a whole other topic. Uh, if you miss a whole week, you just rested. So you're going to restart, um, basically restart that whole block. Um, and if you missed a whole week and you're going into a race, I mean, Things happen, it shouldn't happen more than once, but if it happens all the time, then like racing's either not a priority for you, which is fine, or you need to ask yourself why, how did this happen? Like why did this happen? Um, so check out the blog. It's got all the variations I could think of that were easy to like move through. Um, if you have a specific situation, hit me up, Brendan at Evoke Bike. Hope you have a great week. Talk to you soon, see ya.